Hello, this is Teresa Maggio for BCTV. Today is September 2nd, Friday, five days after Tropical Storm Irene hit Vermont. And today we're taking a ride up the West River Valley to see what the storm has done to the valley and to talk to some of the people affected by the flooding. The Route 30 Rock River Bridge is out and being repaired. Traffic is being turned towards Williamsville. That brown stain you see on the west side of the bridge is where the earth used to come up to. Um, where do you live? Uh, we live on Duke Road in Williamsville. And what happened to you uh, after the flood? Um, well, we've uh, sustained uh, quite a bit of personal property damage, uh, probably over an acre of property. The house is intact as of right now. Uh, it's threatening our septic system. Uh, we're in the process of moving a barn that's ready to go into the river. Uh, we actually got trapped in here uh, after the fire department came and evacuated us. We uh, got our grandson and um, daughter-in-law out and uh, by the time my wife and I got the dogs together the road was already covered with water and we hiked out to the planet farm. Uh, Governor Shumlin, we uh, could really use some help here. Here's the little old bridge all traffic is now being routed over. The bridge graffiti says, fix me before tragedy in red letters. We stopped at the Williamsville fire station. Um, everybody's willing to help. Well, they have to do what they have to do to get the vehicles through, rescue equipment and stuff like that. I live on Stratton Hill Road in South Newfane. Um, we can't get there from here. We can only go to South Newfane where the road was washed out and then we got to walk, walk the rest of the way. Um, takes us an hour and a half to two hours to get to our house. What do you do for groceries? Carrying them up. Oh my gosh, do you have electricity? Yes, we do have a generator. Oh How long do you think you're going to have to do that for? Have no clue. None whatsoever. Um, but they're working on it and doing real good. I was shocked to see the old grist mill in the stream bed. That was the old grist mill, and, and it was so wonderful. <laughs> and the old willow tree is gone. What? Oh, it's heartbreaking. We had to leave on Monday to take a three-day trip, and so this is the first time seeing it since all of the damage has, since things have settled down, and I'm heartbroken. <laughs> yeah, oh my god. Wow. So much for that. I haven't been that way. Well, the Green Iron Bridge. The there? Green Iron Bridge, it, it, um, right in South Newfane Village there. Parish that Hill Parish Hill, yeah. And that, when I left on on Monday, I, you know, I'd seen pictures where it was just completely broken off. And then um, Todd Brown, you know, neighbor, just came and with his excavator and just reattached it or something. I mean, people have been amazing. And our friends up on Adams Hill who are completely stranded and were told it would be two weeks before they could get down, that neighbors just got together and made the road passable. Yeah. I'm <sighs> the guys were fixing utility poles at the corner of Parish Hill and Parish Hill. 
And this is the Parish Hill Bridge put back on its feet by a neighbor. You can see where the steel was bent by the water. Newfane's recycling bins didn't do so well. Dutton's farm stand was working on cleanup. So this is my farm stand location on Route 30 in Newfane. Now my fields up there, virtually untouched. My apple orchard in West Brattleboro, zero damage. My apple orchard in Wyndham, zero damage. So I'm a lucky guy. So that's what happened up here is we had a snag in the brook and uh, the water came screaming over and took a third of my mums away. Took about 1,500 mums away. Now, behind the farm stand, we lost uh, you know, about 300 fruit trees and um, you know, several thousands of dollars worth of perennials and shrubs. Five inches away from going into that building. What? I fixed all this with my tractor. There was a hell of a hole here, but we filled it in quite a bit. And it was like blowing right into the greenhouse. There was like 18 inches of water in that greenhouse. And there was like 18, 20 inches of water rushing through this alley and right through that doorway out there. You're all jammed underneath here, and like everywhere you look, there's there's a mum. There's another one of my mums right here. That's a beauty. But this pile of muck came from our greenhouses, delivered by wheelbarrow by my employees. But the water level in that greenhouse was 18 inches deep. The real big loss was those perennials and those shrubs and those chrysanthemums. I think approaching $75,000. One of our pet mums again. Here's one of our friends again, All right? We stopped off at Camparama in Townsend. Hi, I'm Mike Dupuy from Munson, Massachusetts. Well, as you can see, the river's a little flooded here, and I have a camper here at Camparama. And I came up today just to check on it and make sure everything's safe and sound and ready for the weekend. As you can see, <laughs> As you can see so far, we're okay. It, it, hasn't, it hasn't, hasn't reached, uh, you know, into the door yet. So we're pretty good. They were doing a water release from the dam. It had already gone down three feet, but there is no more beach left. The water line was up past the trees. In Townsend on Route 35, I came across this scene. Saturday, no, Saturday night, we're sleeping here. My girl and I sleeping here together. And that morning, early in the morning, I can hear like a whistle uh, noise from my this river, like it's a kind of like ra like a rumble noise. So I went, I get out in my house, and I look in my driveway, and this driveway it's full of water. It's full of water, and then I walk and I walk back inside my house, and. Um, I came back to my girl and I told my girl that we, we're going to go out in town to get something to stock in our house for in case uh, our powers goes out instead try to scare her. So we went outside and I just stopped there where the water out in my driveway and look up in my bridge like a huge of water like a swirl of water like coming into my bridge. We came down here and I just like go zoom out in my bridge and just headed out. I was 
strong enough to cross in my bridge. And like, you didn't go na, back that night? I was attempted to, and one of my co-workers stopped me. And one of my co-workers says, you do not go back there, you will be not to survive. And on up to Jamaica, worst hit. I'm Ben Williams, and today I was elected to be uh, like a security officer and take care of uh, town traffic and coordinate flagging for road construction and stuff like that. It, you know, every, it looks like the town is really pulling together and everybody's contributing something and we just need to coordinate it and we're doing real well. Tempers are pretty even and we've got a lot of community effort here. What's the biggest problem right now? Uh, probably getting the bridges and the roads back together so people can get back to their homes. Uh, we've got quite a few people that were evacuated uh, from up on Pikes Falls Road there and uh, they're anxious to get back to their back into their own homes again. It's kind of a big mess but uh, there's some good coming out of it. What's the good? The good is that people are working together and there's a lot of community spirit happening here. And uh, it's, it's amazing how people pull together. So uh, you know we've got four houses completely missing on the back street down there and this you know, people are coping. It's it's really amazing. So it's you can't you know, there's nothing you can do to prepare for something like this. You just have to go with the flow when it happens and uh, make make lemonade out of lemons. <laughs> the um people are going along the riverbank, you said? People are going along the riverbank and scouring the riverbanks for um <laughs> for photos and anything that these people have have lost and bringing them into the store and then there's a lady that's right here in town and uh, we just hand everything to her she sorts it out and the families come in and uh, and they just pick what's theirs and so there's a crew cleaning them and and drying them and we have probably thousands of photos at this point the whole town is just incredible. We have a collection jar from, we've collected over $2,300 worth of, uh, or $2,300 to, uh, to hand out to families. One lady just took $500 to go buy some new clothing. She lost everything. So it's really wonderful. It's filling. We keep emptying it. And... Oh, well, our. Our son, my stepson Wesley, he uh, stepped right in Monday morning and got in his ex excavator, got into the river and started clearing the river, clearing the bridge, fixing the bridge, putting in a whole new road. People are taking care of themselves. Everybody is coming out and it, it's really incredible. Jamaica is the new terminus of Route 30 because their bridge broke during the storm. And gravel trucks screamed around. It was a sight to see. I found a man sitting at the corner of River Road and Route 30 in Jamaica. Well, I, I, we have a place up in uh, 2608 Pike Swalls Road. And we, space, we say from May to September. We spent all our summers here. The water came down and uh, well, at our house, the telephone attachment came loose from the house first. Then all of a sudden, I went out to the road to start pulling that away. And all of a sudden, the, uh, I hear this cracking and the uh, transformer above the telephone cable and the whole pole went in started going and I had a tractor or not a tractor a lawnmower uh, between the house and the, the trailer and when it pulled the mast off the house I'm standing in the road by not too far from the pole and the brakes were on the uh, lawnmower and it pulled it about 60 feet and I thought it was going to go in the brook 
<laughs> How did you get out of there? Okay, we. <laughs> this was fun. It was really nice. The guys uh, came around with ATVs, and uh, my uh, th there was something like 15 or 20 people that we went up to the top of the hill behind our house. There's a road that goes up there, Metcalf Lane, and uh, we all went up there and they, they assembled, and they brought us down by ATVs. And my wife was in a, a Honda. Uh, Jeep with a trailer behind, and when we got down, she says, It's not Disneyland. <laughs> it wasn't Disneyland because we were going two and a half miles to get down around in, in these old uh, trails and uh, logging trails. So we were going through stream beds and everything else. How long did it take to get down? Uh, about an hour uh, with them, the way that they, they, they know where they were going. Because we're staying with our friends here, uh, Denise and Freddie, uh, and, but they, they mostly had this, all this washed out and the mud here, and uh, this didn't get to hit too bad really down here. Well, we're supposed to go back on September 13th to to, to California, but we'll stay here if we have to. In Jamaica Village, people were waiting for Governor Peter Shumlin to arrive. We will rebuild the houses. We'll, re we'll, we'll, re we'll rebuild the roads and the bridges, the fire stations, all the things we've lost. And we'll get it done remarkably quickly for Vermont. Well, I can't tell you how proud I am of all of you. So just a couple of quick facts uh, that you need to know. And then I just want to answer questions you might have. Uh, President Obama and his team have been extraordinary, along with Senator Leahy, Senator Sanders, and Congressman Welch. They turned around our request for emergency aid in five hours in the White House. I don't think anything's happened that fast in Washington in the history of America. But the, the expectation is that he will grant us individual assistance. What that means is that anyone who's had damage to home or property that's a primary homeowner, doesn't apply to secondary homeowners, uh, that you will qualify for up to $30,400 worth of just outright cash that never has to be paid back. Second piece is you will also qualify for low interest mortgages up to 250,000 uh, bucks for folks that have bigger challenges uh, than 30,400 is gonna get you. In terms of businesses, we wanna get them up and running as quickly as we can. We've done two things. Uh, I've implemented a program. It's an immediate loan program for small businesses and large as well as farmers. If you need cash right now to get the cash register, new cash register, to replace a cooler, to do whatever you need to do, uh, get feed to the cows, uh, we'll get you 20,000 bucks quickly if you call Vita. Second, uh, you will also qualify as a business owner for small business administration money. So loans, low interest, we can get that out the door to you. Finally, in terms of the extraordinary municipal workers that are here, town select board members, community members, uh, we have qualified for the public assistance that means that for state highways, we'll get 100% uh, uh, grant from the state federal government. And for local and municipal bridges and all the infrastructure that you're doing, it's a 75-25 match. The 25 is state and local, the 75 is federal. We split the state and local, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. So basically it's a 12 and a half percent match at the town level. The Three Mountain Inn served as the emergency operations center. This is our, what we're calling our little lunch wagon. We've had um, donations of food, sandwiches, uh, local restaurants. Um, some of it we've done ourselves. Uh, driving around and feeding the construction crew, the volunteers that are road, flagging the roads and making sure the, the police officers that are here, making sure everybody's eating and getting hydrated. Uh, then that morning when everything happened, uh, we had people going around asking people to evacuate and it didn't take probably 15 minutes or half hour for that water street to just flood over and the house, four houses that disappeared into the water that washed away and uh, Pikes Falls Road, uh, West Jamaica Road. Then I met an old friend who had a horrifying tale to tell. At 8.30 Sunday morning, one of the selectmen, Lou Brusso, stopped and informed my wife and I that he was very concerned, or the town was concerned, about the uh, uh, how high the water was in the Ball Mountain stream that runs right across the street. 
from my house. We were one of uh, many people evacuated around my neighborhood. So I'm also the town health officer and that made me part of the emergency response team and the select board chair asked me to man the caution tape at the bridge that leads right to my house to keep people off there and keep them safe. All through this storm there was a thundering sound of rocks rolling down the streams for that stream for at least seven hours. Uh, it just was an incredible sound you could feel in your feet. So the water got higher and higher and I think the uh, I was busy trying to keep people off but I periodically would see or hear pieces of houses uh, coming apart upstream. First their porches and then they would hold on for quite a while but what was very disturbing for me was I was trying to pull some people away from a house by the bridge who were taking pictures was when my immediate next door neighbor Tracy Payne's huge maple tree just tipped over and went into the stream and it fell into the water you know a magnificent tree I don't know how old well over a hundred years old it came into the bridge and it didn't even slow it down it just stripped the limbs made a terrible cracking and deep barking just a horrendous sound never slowed it down sent it out the other side and her house had a couple of uh, support posts on what was left of her porch went really loud and that was pretty much the beginning of the end. Brett's house went in first. I didn't see that. I saw the pieces go by but anything that was left when they hit the bridge they disintegrated. Uh, Sean O'Brien, the house right next door to me was his great-grandmother's house and we heard the getting all too familiar sound of you know, houses creaking and smashing and falling into the brook. And he said, I think that's Graham's house. And then we, we went down to the brook and watched what was left of that smash into the bridge. And just when it went out the other side, it was like they went through a shredder. But the most disturbing one was for me was her next door neighbor, Corinne Hardy's house, right after Sean's house went through. Her house just sort of lifted off the foundation and set in stream and floated towards us, listing this way and that, floating those. And then it was listing, coming closer and closer to us while Sean still had his camera out. And it bowed forward, roof up, coming at us. The roof line hit the bridge abutment, uh, the abutment of course, but the rail, a cement rail, and it exploded right in front of us. It just fell to pieces, insulation, shingles, trim coming onto the bridge. Look to the other side, it was just pieces. In the meantime, my house, 153, the land had been falling away all day. And uh, we, we had a lot of damage in the cellar. We're still dealing with mud, but we moved back in last night. And we're, our heart goes out to our neighbors, and, and here we are. We, we have power, water, hot water even even though everything's a mess down there. Lucky.